This person has Huntington's, as does this, as does this. Now, if we know that's a bad thing, natural selection can actively uh, select against that, right? And it's a really easy thing for natural selection to do because every time there is a dominant allele, it expresses that phenotype and natural selection can pull them out of the population. The problem though is recessive disorders because if this is Tay-Sachs disease, who of these individuals shows Tay-Sachs disease? Just that one, right? Mm -hmm. But how many of those individuals carry a Tay-Sachs allele? Yeah. Three of them. Natural selection can't touch these guys because they're expressing the dominant phenotype. That dominant phenotype is masking the recessive phenotype. So recessive disorders become so much more difficult to remove out of our population because of the heterozygous genotype. It carries but doesn't express the recessive disorder. Yeah. So I know the statistic with Huntington's disease, because people in my family have it, um, what, um, they say that your children have a 50% chance of inheriting it if you have it. So how does that happen if, if they're, like, in that Punnett square, you have 75% chance? That's a wonderful question. And there is a 50% chance if <coughs> the genotype is this. Um, if an individual is heterozygous, right, this individual would have Huntington's disease, mm -hmm. but carries a normal allele, and you cross it with an individual that does not have Huntington's disease, homozygous recessive, mm -hmm. that's the only scenario in which there would be a 50-50 chance. But if the person with Huntington's disease had a homozygous dominant, they don't. All would, right, because that would be this cross. Mm -hmm. Everybody would receive a dominant day. So, best case scenario with Huntington's disease, there's a 50 50 chance. The question is, though, why do things like Huntington's disease perpetuate uh, throughout our genome, right? Dominant disorders can remain within our genomes. And the answer, at least for Huntington's disease, is sometimes those phenotypic effects don't start presenting themselves until like mid 30s. And by mid-30s, you've already generally had some children, right? Before you actually know that you're carrying this disorder, you've had some offspring. And because of the late presentation of the phenotypic characters, um, you didn't know. Okay, I know I'm out of time. And so when we come back, we're going to, on Monday, we're going to talk briefly about genetic screening and how we do that. And then uh, we'll move into DNA and DNA replication. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, Linda. Um. So we can we can take like two pieces of notes for the test. Is that accurate? Right. So for the final, we can have a piece of paper front and okay. back. Okay. Awesome.